Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is June 16th, 2017. Let's take a look at our current conditions here. Solar wind speeds are elevated today at 558.1 kilometers per second with a density of 11.3. Say hello to new sunspot region AR2663. It accompanies our two-day-old sunspot now, AR2662. According to spaceweather.com, new sunspot AR2663 has a beta gamma magnetic field that harbors energy for M-class solar flares. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. This one is labeled at sunspot 28. And taking a look over here at the KP indices, we are now at a G1 class storm with KP indices sitting at five and the 24 hour max also sitting at five. Taking a look at our coronal hole today on the SDO, and it's still earth-facing, and these are the three that are the culprits today for this particular storm, as this coronal hole was turning earth-faced a couple of days ago. The holes that are now turning away from earth, we are just now experiencing their solar wind stream. As I said earlier, we are now currently in a G1 storm, with the current conditions, as spaceweather.com had forecasted that there was a 20% chance of a G1 class storm today. Looks like they were right. And 2017 has been a very active year as far as weather goes. We've had not one, but two parts of the country that has lost nearly all of its drought conditions. Here is an article from weatherunderground.com. Florida drought coverage drops nearly 60% in two weeks. Florida's drought coverage decreased by nearly 60% following heavy rains across the Sunshine State during June's first full week. Some 72% of the state was classified under the drought by the U.S. Drought Monitor on May 30th. But the most recent drought monitor, as of Tuesday, has brought that number down to about 12%. Here is the graph right here, folks. How did the majority of Florida's drought get wiped out in just two weeks' time? It's simple. Portions of South Florida have averaged an inch or more of rain per day over the past two weeks, and other parts of the state have not been far behind. Here are the select rainfall totals observed in the Sunshine State from June 1st to June 14th. Marco Island, a barrier island in the Gulf of Mexico off of southwest Florida, picked up nearly half of this month's rainfall on June 6th alone when 9.68 inches were measured. Another 4.57 inches fell June 7th, followed by 3.12 inches on June 8th, yielding a three-day total of 17.37 inches from June 6th through June 8th. An average June would feature 4.4 inches of rain on Marco Island, and it picked up more than four times that amount with half of the month remaining. The latest three-month precipitation outlook for July through September from NOAA's Climate Prediction Center shows equal chances of above and below average precipitation for the entire state of Florida. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for us today. Please like and share. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and soon we will have the GrandSolarMinimum.com. That is coming. It's under construction right now. We'll talk soon.